Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to be painting cute house plants. I am here with the lovely Abby from Uproot Brushes. And hey. today we are going to be using um, my latest brush pack, Mess Makers for Procreate. It's a mixed media brush set and um, we're going to be mostly using some of the thicker wet paint brushes for this project specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can, Abby, can I add to that? Addie's sure. brush pack is super innovative and incredibly organic. I've used it quite a bit and I just, I mean, you can use it without any paper texture if you want, because the textures in the actual paint are so realistic and luscious. You just feel like you're actually painting with real paint. And um, it is such a great toolbox to add to your um, Procreate kits. Thank you. It's the highest compliment coming from you. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it was a lot of months in the making. Um, and I actually I think I sent it to Abby in like February and she brainstormed names with me and it was it's always good to bounce ideas off of her. Uh, I feel like I've learned so much just doing these sessions from you. I learn I learn something new every time as well. Um, so I'm popping in. We have Sheila here. Thank you so much for joining and Leanne. Super excited to have you here. Um, I'm going to share my screen here and talk through a bit about the brushes. Um, there is, before I get any further, the link to get the brushes is in the video description and also pinned in the chat. And then in the video description as well, there is a free brush from this pack if you want, and then this June color palette that we will be using for the project today. Oh, Sheila says she just did the third lesson from the Uproot Master Watercolor course. Such an amazing resource. Abby worked so hard on like, it, how many how many courses do you have within, or how many I think, sections? Gosh, like a dozen? I, I wanna say in seven. Seven? I think oh, okay. seven or eight. I'm not sure. Yeah, seven, I think. And they all come with little free brush packs and stuff. So it's also fun. Yeah. Yes, it's such a good resource. Um, okay, so brush overview here. This, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try to move the arrow for when I change <laughs> brushes so that you could maybe follow along a little more easily. We'll see how it goes. I might be scrawling or scratching. <laughs> Um, but the, the brush set is a, a bit of a, um, uh, a smattering of a lot of different things, hence the mixed media. So I have it divided into four larger sections. The first is dry media and we have a buttery pencil, which has, um, like tilt functionality and some nice texture. So nice to draw with. It really is. nice to draw with. It's really soft and like a little, yeah. um, oh, it's buttery. It's fine. That's yeah. The name. Exactly. Um, a soft pastel, which pairs nicely. It has a very similar texture to the pencil. Mm. Let's choose a more fun color for my eyes. Um, rough scratch pencil. And I'm not going to go through all of them, actually. <laughs> that might take too long. There's 30 brushes in the whole set. Um, we have a multiply pencil shader, which you can layer color. Uh, and it acts with each brush stroke as the uh, it multiplies them together just like when you change a layer blend mode to multiply, but all on one layer. Um, so you can achieve wet. really dark areas if you want to go over multiple times without yes. having to change the layer just in your sketch. It's really yes. helpful. You can bring it all the way to black if you want to. Yeah. Uh, so then in the wet, okay, let's see. I'm going to dim my screen a little bit because that seemed just a smidge washed out. Um, so the wet media brushes, um, the first three in this section are the, uh, goopy paint series. And they are just like a mini collection of brushes that work really well together. Um, I haven't said the canvas size, Sheila. I, I see you're asking that I'm working in 3000 by 3000, which is kind of by standard. Um, yeah, it's a nice average size that you can crop and still not lose too much, um, detail but it's also yeah. not so massive that your paint strokes look like tiny scratches yes that is that is so confusing when it happens and, and you like try to diagnose the problem or even for things with texture sometimes the grain 
um, is anchored to like a certain pixel size. And yeah. so if you're working in an absolute massive canvas, um, you won't get the same definition that you do in maybe a smaller one. Yeah. Can we just, before you erase that, just show that brush stroke. That is delicious. I mean, it looks, I mean, it looks just like paint. Maybe I'm just going <laughs> to get my camera a little. Oh, there we go. There we don't have those lines. Um, so this is just like really thick, goopy paint. There's no opacity when you layer brush strokes, but you do have this dual color effect. So it's darker on the edges and then you have this texture showing through. Um, if you want to get a little nerdy with me, um, it's it's a stacked combined brush. So the the lighter color is the top brush and then the darker is the lower brush. And um, the more you press, the less texture you get. You can kind of start to like you remove some of the texture as you layer in the paint. So that's helpful to know. Um, and then the Samiri Goopy paint is similar but has more translucency and so when you layer it's um not sharp translucent through i realize my hand was covering that but you can blend a little bit as you layer brush strokes and uh this one as well you'll lose some of the texture the more that you go over without lifting your pencil and then the third one in that is the goopy blender which I use on all of the, all three tools, the smudge, the paintbrush, and the eraser, depending. Um, and this is just like the texture portion. It has um, a little bit of like a wet paint effect when you do layer the strokes. You can kind of see, if I zoom way in, the like edges are a little darker, um, but it works to pull, oh, that's not the right brush works to pull the paint from um, if you if you paint something with the diluted goopy paint or the um, thick or smeary goopy paint and thick goopy paint uh, it'll maintain that texture but allow you to blend so some blend and smudge brushes have more of like a, a Gaussian blur effect when you blur with them um, and this one retains the texture so <coughs> you can you can pull it through and then it also um, I keep switching to the tool and not the brush when you erase to it'll maintain that texture as well if I zoom in on that. it's really nice it's it's exactly as you would do if you'd painted an area and then you wanted to drag a little bit of that paint outside the area in real life with a real brush that didn't have a lot of paint on it's got such a lot of applications that are yes. really awesome I think that's a good point that it, it's it's like you've just like wiped off as much paint yeah. from your brush as possible and that that's what that brush is like Ooh, we have heidi from nottingham uk and alfredo oh my goodness thank you guys so much for joining us this is exciting all right so the next one this diluted paint smear i want to show you because that's the free brush that i have linked in the description be sure to snag that if you haven't already and this one is again i'll zoom in here so that we can see the texture um this has a much more subtle texture and it is a little more translucent so you can see as you layer the strokes you can see what's underneath um, again you have some of that harder edges on the outside as well and this works great as a blender this is a good example of um, a blender that's more of a blur blender so as i go through here you can see it really loses the texture for the most part and gives you that um, gaussian blur look as you blend um, all right, so then these ones are in the same vein as the diluted paint smear. So I'm going to skip down to the watercolor brushes in the pack. Felt like it was necessary to include them in a mixed media pack. Um, they are, there's just like a solid hard edge watercolor brush that has this texture and then a wash brush to pair with it that um, is super pressure sensitive for opacity as well as size and you can kind of blend and blur as you paint with that so 
Um, okay, so then the next section is the mess makers. And these are, <laughs> I remember trying to <laughs> describe when I first showed them to Abby. And I, I think I just called them all like messy brush. I didn't have separate names for them yet. But they are like weird, organic. Um, I, don't, I don't even know how to describe them because they don't fully <clears throat> replicate a traditional media that I'm familiar with. They, for me, they remind me of if you've, if you're doing a monoprint and you want to just add a sticky area of ink that you've got a little texture on, you can just transfer to that area or, um, yeah. Kind of like with a brayer or. Um, what you would do is you'd get the, um, gel mat that you're doing your um mono print on and then you would ink it up and then remove some ink from it with like leaves or i don't know sponges oh. or whatever and then you print that and you get this really mottled gorgeous um organic texture that's it's so interesting i'm like trying to picture it in my head i'm a little confused when you said it with <laughs> leaves but that sounds really cool <laughs> um but what would what would i guess is there a word for that look i don't know it's like texture transfer you could also achieve it with like um if you inked up a piece of crumpled up tin foil and then you took your picture and you went squidge 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 on it and you left like organic oh squidgy bits I wish I had called them squidgy brushes. <laughs> that would have been amazing. That's their unofficial name now. And, you know, I called this squeegee E, but it reminds me of like squish, squished up, um, let me clear the screen, squished up plastic wrap. Um, oh, I'm yes. I'm on the smudge tool, but here. Um, yes. Yes, very much like or a plastic bag, any, any like lightweight plastic. That's kind of the look. So I like to use these for backgrounds or as um, smudge brushes on other things to just add some weird texture. And there's less control with them, which is kind of where the Messmaker brush or uh, pack name came from. Um, because y you can't be precise with these brushes. And um, I, I mean, in digital art, you're not making a physical mess, but because of that, it can be so easy to like get trapped in the perfectionism and keep mm -hmm. moving pixels and pushing things around and undoing and redoing over and over. So part of the idea behind this pack is, is to help you embrace the imprecision and imperfection that naturally comes when you're creating anything. Yeah. Uh, oh, I read, I saw an Instagram post the other day. I don't know who posted it, but it said, artists remember that your mistakes are actually your style and i thought that is so true because like if you look at a particular artist the thing the mistakes they choose to leave in usually separate them from the other people doing the exact same thing yeah i i don't know if it was me that you saw it from but i i had shared a post was it you yeah on my stories that somebody else had posted that um and it's hard to see it in your own work, but you oh, can yeah. definitely tell, um, maybe not, but I don't know if it's mistakes when you see it in other people's style. No, um, you, you and, see it more as like, oh, I love that they've left that there. It's so compelling. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it probably goes back to being the most critical of yourself and then seeing... Yeah the best in other artists that you look up to um but yeah i loved that i i thought that that was really uh reassuring yeah that's so funny that i read it on yours and i'm telling you about it <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, i didn't, I... didn't want to assume that it was just from me <laughs> i had i had seen it from somebody else <laughs> I do that with my husband as well. I'm like, did you hear that? Whatever. And he's like, I was the one who told you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my husband and I send each other TikToks back and forth. And my favorite is when I send him a TikTok and three days later, he sends me the same one back. <laughs> Doesn't realize it. <laughs> Claims that he saw it first. <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
Um, okay, so the last section I'll go through quick here is odds and dobs. Um, I start off with two shader brushes. One is more fine and one is a little more, uh, a little more splattery. Let's make it small here, make it bigger. And actually let me, forgive me, I'm gonna do a tech thing quick here while I just try to make my screen a little less blown out. That is not making a difference. That knob isn't doing anything. All right, I'll dim my screen again. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see it better. Okay, so one's a little larger. And then the rest in this set is um, like clusters and daubs and dabs. So in the process of making them, I started out as uh, making them as foliage brushes. So they can be really useful to create quick like bushes and trees um, that give the suggestion of leaves without being quite so literal. I know there's a lot of really cool foliage packs that have leaf shapes. And so the idea was to make this something that um, just gave that suggestion of leaves, but then could potentially be interpreted for other things besides foliage. So you can quickly just make like a, a little tree shape or a bush, like those beautiful manicured. Um, oh yeah, topiaries. <laughs> yes, that that I love when you see people trimming them. I don't know why that's, my favorite, <laughs> but they're like cutting the hair of it. So those are all of the brushes. Oh, and then there's an ink brush, which um, is like a felt tip pen. Whew. Okay, so let me quick catch up on some comments here. Um, oh, we have a network engineer, Apprendiz, very cool. Um, Heidi, thank you for joining us. Oh, I see, you, you, you're from Nottingham, I already said welcome. Um, and then Sheila, this is what I wanted to highlight. So one of Abby's tutorials go through all of the brushes. Is that, that's in course, right? Uh, yes, it's the one where you print out a little, um, I mean, you stamp out a little chart and then you take each brush and you take it through its paces. Like you go, when, what does it look like when it's tiny? What does it look like when it's medium size? What does it look like when you use it as an eraser? What does it look like? When you use it as a smudge tool. Yeah, that is such a, a wonderful technique. Because <clears throat> it, it is overwhelming when you get a brush pack and yeah. you kind of have to yeah. start from scratch to learn what each one does. So that's, yeah. that's such a smart way to go through it. It's the absolute first lesson, or, or maybe it's the second lesson in the um, uh, Mastering Everything Watercolor course so you don't even have to run through the whole course you can just go straight there grab the stamp watch the video how to do it and just test out every brush you've ever bought yes um actually abby if you get a chance before the end of the uh workshop here drop the link in where people can sign up i'm sure, sure. There are some people hanging out that, that haven't taken it um it's a it's a great resource that you've made available fully free for for anybody. Um, um, I just think it's incredible. Okay, um, Leanne, if let me know if the screen is sharp again now. Um, otherwise, maybe refresh the screen. It looks like I tried to adjust the focus a, a slight bit, but yeah, let me know if you refresh and it's better. Okay, so today we're going to be drawing cute, cute plants in wonky pots. <laughs> and so let me kind of show you some examples of that. Um, this is kind of like a prayer plant, but I'm not sure that it's exactly like a pl one that exists. I think the leaves are a little pointier. Um, and a little cactus. This was done with the watercolor, some aloe vera. Um, but the one we're going to do today is this snake plant. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So let me hop back into my canvas. Again, it is 3,000 by 3,000 pixels, um, 300 DPI, and the RGB color setting. Just the uh, I just do the automatic color setting when you create a new canvas. I never change it from that. Yeah, me too. 
Um, and I've just added a bunch of layers. We might add more as we go, but I have eight to start and I'm gonna sketch on the very top layer and I'll be using the buttery pencil to sketch. Um, the color palette, again, if you're just joining us, the color palette is available uh, to download in the video description. And I think that this is black. <laughs> it, might be, it might be like a slightly off black, which I also enjoy using. And um, as we start, I wanted to say we're going to not um, make this so perfect. So these are, these are going to be wonky pots. I'm going to try to not hold until it snaps to quick shape. Um, but if you, want, if you want to make things more smooth, feel free. This is just the little looser style that we're going to go with. So I'm going to start by drawing one circle. And this is the opening of the pot. And then from here, I'm going to estimate about how tall I want it to be and draw a oh, that was kind of quick. Draw a similar shaped circle, trying to line them up. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to connect my two circles with a slightly curved line. And just fix that little edge of the pot there. This week, I tried to practice after our chat on Thursday. And I don't know I just hit a complete creative wall so I went and crocheted that is sometimes the best fix <laughs> yeah exactly to just do something really tactile yeah I um I don't do much sewing these days but I used to all the time but whenever I do I, I just is so meditative and peaceful and it's kind of yeah like, it really feels like my brain just quiets down. It's it's a really pleasant. Oh, Sheila knits. That's I'm sure a very similar feeling for you. Addy, do you mind sharing your incredible yarn storage hack? That's <laughs> it's the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Yes. I well <laughs> so I um I should preface this by saying that like I am an extreme yarn hoarder. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm in I that category. <laughs> kind of suspect that they are like multiplying in secret <laughs> because I swear I did not buy all of that. Um, when we moved apartments last, I I had already really pared down my my stash from um, when we'd moved a year prior. We moved to Chicago right before the pandemic, and then we only spent a, a year in that apartment. And so I'd already you know, we moved states and I felt like I'd like really cleaned out my collection. And then I didn't use any yarn for the entire time that we lived in the apartment. I was really struggling to justify keeping it. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to get rid of it. It's just such an investment. It's really, it's nice <laughs> yarn. And so, well, my husband is at work and I was packing. I ended up putting all of our yarn, all of my yarn in our couch cushions behind the batting and like behind the cushion. So it simply made it fluffier. And um, it is still there to this day, like two and a half years later. <laughs> the woman is a genius. I'm sorry. That is next level genius. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is very effective. Um, I think I think I told I think I told Mike when he got home from work that day because I was just like too tickled and it was too <laughs> funny. But <laughs> nobody has to know is what I'm saying. Nobody no. has to know the extent of yarn stash. No, it's brilliant. Um, did you ever read this? Is this is a throwback? I, I remember reading the Yarn Harlot, um, which was like a blog, and she had some books. She was a knitter, and um, she would just tell stories on her blog about her life with yarn and knitting yeah. and I know that she stored her yarn in their grand piano <laughs> so I assume nobody was playing it but no, I, I love must have muffled it a little bit yeah I would I would assume it was maybe not being used yeah <laughs> it'd be pretty noticeable I know people put cushions inside the big drum the kick drum of their drum kit uh, so, oh, I mean, why not yarn? Just Yeah. I mean, use what you have. We have a couch. I don't have a piano or a drum kit. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, let me pop 
this on here. Heidi had this message to you, Abby. Um, love the Sydney connection. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so what I've done is just added a back rim and I'm gonna be honest, I don't always I don't always know how to draw the front like lip of the uh, the edge of the pot. So I usually just ghost in a back and figure it out later. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then let's see, we can erase the back portion of the pot. I keep making too many leaves. Yeah, I um, I struggled with that with the aloe vera one that I drew. And is is a snake plant also called Sansevier Sansevieria? Sansevieria. Yes, it is. It is called that. There used to be a surf video that my husband used to force me to watch called Africa Sansevieria. You know, a surf from my video yes. <laughs> It was a surf video. I've watched a lot of surf videos. I can even like quote the words off by heart. That's what happens when you marry somebody who likes surfing. <laughs> I I think like being able to recite with the video um, <laughs> just like really says a lot about your dedication. <laughs> it's impressive. Or how bored I was when it was being played. <laughs> Okay, so snake plants um, can have like twisted and tilted leaves, but they're basically tall and skinny with not a ton of shape. So we're just going to, I'm going to stick with three and um, trying to make them different lengths, but they kind of seem to have all ended up, they both ended up the same height. Let's see. So well, this the, one, so I'm doing what I really love about this pencil is sorry I interrupted you you mm -hmm. can press really softly and get shading instantly and then press really hard and it transitions to dark shading super quickly sorry oh, I interrupted your yeah. train of thought um but that's that's one of the things that I use as a technique as I, um, I I've done like a lot of pieces with just this brush and being able to switch between those and I find I use that functionality a lot on the eraser tool as well yes um yeah it's it's helpful for sure so I think I was saying I was doing an s curve to make this a little twisted and then I started to make it not Twisted. So to draw the twist, um, let me quick erase some of this so you can see a little more clearly the exact one that I'm talking about. So starting with an S curve, and then I'm going to go um, from the tip, I'm going to do another S curve, maybe not quite so severe. And Oh, I see what you're point. doing. That's genius. I'm going to do that. It's um from this book that oh, I don't have it in the room. It's a book by this um British artist. Her name's Marjorie, and it's just called Drawing Flowers. Um, but she breaks down techniques like that. She's she did a lot of watercolor uh floral work for um i want to say like encyclopedia stuff but maybe i may okay um marjorie blamey and her i don't know if the books are in print i got it like second hand but it is it is a treasure um so i can't take credit for the technique but i also i love how know. real i love how um analog art techniques are completely translatable onto procreate and watching um I like I watch often watch um analog um art tutorials just because there's a lot of stuff that you can just pull from there and apply in procreate as well yeah. sorry what were you gonna say I have no idea but I think especially <laughs> when a lot of a lot of your brush packs um 
aim to replicate traditional media. And so that makes a lot of sense to me that you you would pull from watching that um, into Procreate. And part of that fun puzzle is figuring out how to translate it. Yeah. With the tools that you have. Um, yeah, totally. And, and with like watercolor, especially referencing real watercolor to be able to replicate that. On the yeah. Screen. Okay, I was saying uh, a couple years ago, I did a leaf drawing video that breaks down um, using that line of motion to draw leaves. So kind of like, like that here. So for drawing twisted leaves, um, just doing like a series of three S curves and connecting. See that one wasn't quite right connecting them at the start and end points. And then it's, it's kind of an optical illusion to figure out where you need to erase. Um, let me zoom in so you can see a little clearer. But that can be a helpful way to get some of those twists. And that's like an extreme twist, that's not that's maybe not the clearest, but um, it's it's all about the flow. I, I think that, uh, especially with like drawing nature things, um, you want things to be in the same line of motion, and so that the leaf is on these. In this case, they're moving fluidly upwards, and so um, when you're drawing the folded leaf, you wouldn't want it bent back on itself like this necessarily you no the, the line of motion then i'd be looking for which cat had broken my leaf on my plant <laughs> although i think my snake plant kind of looks a little weird like that right <laughs> now. It's, been, it's been a little neglected i saw your post this week of the cat just about the plant <laughs> <laughs> yeah um the amount of plants that have been sacrificed for my cat's whims is, is a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they just get it in their head? They're just like, ah, I feel like my cat is Absolutely. Bum. Well, <laughs> Pronto, he's, he's the most guilty culprit. He is, he's super athletic and he loves to climb everything, including things that can't be climbed like ferns and monstera plants. <laughs> and so then he resorts to jumping on and off of them and um sometimes that results in the pot tipping over <laughs> it's no good for anybody except except him i'm assuming it's a good time for him yeah i'm sure i i uh, cats are funny i sometimes wonder if they actually like get a little kick out of doing really bad stuff i i like, really think they do <laughs> i think they're just, like a little spicy <laughs> yeah no, exactly I read somewhere that cats have actually haven't been domesticated. They've domesticated us into looking after them. That sounds right. Um, and as I seem to recall, it happened twice separately in two different parts of the world. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Uh, I think that like, well, cats also are much not that far removed from being wild compared to dogs yeah um, dogs i mean if you look at my dogs they would die in the wild in minutes they are such morons <laughs> i mean I, I don't think my cats would survive long either <laughs> but but um I, I i think there's like some measurement of how many um generations it takes for an animal to like get back to being wild and that that's like one for cats <laughs> yeah and for dogs it takes a little more um remember yeah. the year before last in pokey gone like a little rum springer yeah? pronto did pronto, oh, pronto. Did. pokey so pronto was I, I think he was born in a shelter um and lived his entire life indoors except for those six days but 
Pokey was brought into animal control as a kitten from the streets and she was missing her little tail. And so Aww. anytime that she's like, she's like stepped a couple feet outside and immediately ran back in. Like, no, this is not for me. Pronto you make, just has you know. <laughs> yeah. Pronto has no idea um, what the real world is like. He's lived such a charmed life. Um, and there is, we've noticed a marked difference from before he escaped and he came home and it, it was the sweetest thing ever and he was okay. It was good. It was a happy ending. Uh, a huge difference though in his eagerness to escape before and now. Now he kind of like- I think it's called cool gratitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some lessons learned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I- I don't think he ate at all when he was out for those six days because he had lost so much weight. Um, so all of the talk that he does when he's like sitting watching birds in the window chattering is it's just talk. He can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like they have their claws, like theoretically they could, um, but in practice, no, it's just not possible. Okay. I've sketched for so long on this. I'm going to move on. <laughs> Um, cool. Layer below. I'm going to make it more transparent. Um, Abby, do you want to pop in and show us how far? Oh, yeah, going? sure. Let me just. I'm up to the same place as you. Uh, window. Okay. And Leanne, I see uh, you're saying that it's in and out. If, um, if it gets too much, don't worry about it. The replay should be fully populated uh, immediately after. Oh, so cute oh i forgot to draw the face on mine i love oh that. i just drew mine because i skipping ahead yes i love the fold of the leaves i um i noticed that a lot of snake plants do that at the base they come up curled and then they're straight or unfurled from uh, on up i was just copying your technique it's um sheila your cat oscar ran off oh i'm so glad that he came home it is it was it's hard it's really hard um oh i'm so sorry i removed what you. I, oh i i hid you and not the i didn't switch screens properly um but i was saying it's it's so emotional when they're out and they are such good hiders um it's next to impossible to, to find them on their own unless they want to be found. And it sounds like Oscar did after three days. Um, okay, so now we're going to paint the pot. So let's move on to the thick goopy paint brush. And I, I'm just moving to a random layer underneath. Uh, we could rearrange these later and I'm going to separate the pot out onto a separate layer from the, the leaves. So I just love how when you paint with this paintbrush, it comes out like gouache, like you're painting on a board with gouache. It's just delicious. And I love that you can see the places where your brush is moving, um, which you can't usually see with a, a Procreate brush. Oh, um, like uh, the individual layered strokes, do you mean? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the first time I learned about burnt edges, which is not something that this brush necessarily has, but the diluted paint smear does that's another another way that you can tell um but that was with you in one of the first brush making sessions that we did it's just oh. like there's so many features hidden in the brush studio um they are hey yeah so i'm going to start with the pot being all one color and then on this same layer i'm going to just switch to a contrast and we're going to do a dipped glaze and um, I'm going to alpha lock this layer for now so that I am drawing just on top of what I've already put on the paint or on the layer um, 
I did that really quickly, so I'll slow back down again for you. If you want to turn on alpha lock, you can tap the layer to bring up the side menu and then tap alpha lock, or you can use two fingers to swipe towards the right on the layer to turn that on. So then with my contrast, I'm gonna start just for this like back rim portion where it's so small and I already like carefully put it in the areas that I want to. So I'll just go over. A little bit of the ways down and now I'm going to go back in and turn off alpha lock and I'm going to thicken up just where this teal is on the sides so because um, when you dip the pot in glaze it does add that extra layer that adds a little bit of thickness and then I'm going to draw in a little drop Oh, I love those kinds of mugs and pots. Lots of people are showing them on Instagram. And every time you go and click on their link and that says buy the stuff I'm making, sold out immediately. I believe it. Um, I love, love, love watching videos of people doing pottery things. I see yeah. live streams on like TikTok of that. Um, just like very cool to see ceramics be people doing ceramics be successful makes me happy my dream is to have entirely handmade dishware someday um, I took a pottery class in 2020 and I made like everything was really small <laughs> that I made because the larger that you make it is like so much harder to control or it was for me and my unskilled hands um and so like our coffee mugs are like this big and we could have like a shot of espresso <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe i'll just buy them from somebody at some point <laughs> um sheila says she does pottery it is relaxing it was it is uh, again just like sewing for me it's that very meditative experience and you're so focused on making something with your hands I'm going to move up to the next layer and I'm going to add in um, some detail here. So actually, I'm going to move all the way to the layer below my sketch. And I'm going to grab this black again. And with the same, with the same brush, no, I'm going to move to the diluted paint smear brush to do the outlines here. And reduce my brush size down. And I'm going to do kind of like partial outlines. So I'm starting and stopping. This is a really nice brush um, for doing like a glaze over the top of things to, to add sort of um, tonal detail. Yes. Um, yeah, I think it's what I will use for uh, adding some shade too. So in the same vein there. It's so versatile. It's really, really cool. keeping some of that sketchy look again here we get to the problem of the <laughs> the front rim <laughs> maybe by the end of this workshop I'll have figured out how to draw that Before I switch to paint in the leaves, I want to draw just a little face and we're going to do two eyes and a nice U-shaped mouth, but maybe not. Maybe we'll make it in the center this time. There we go. Um, can
can you remind me who that artist was that you spoke about who does cute um, things and a very nice lighting? Yes, Luma Llama. Um, Luma after, Llama. After the session, if we have a few minutes, I'll pull it up because his, he, and, okay, I think he, I think he works at Disney, but he, he works at a, like, a motion picture studio doing 3D lighting in, in, like, animations and is just brilliant. And he, I think he has a YouTube video on shading that breaks down, um, just like shading a ball and the way that he explained it just really stuck for me shading is something that i still struggle to learn and uh and i feel like i'm learning every single time with every single piece if i change the direction i have to learn all over again um but that his his video really helped and he does a lot of cute things with cute faces i love those yes. you can't go wrong with a cute face all right so i have skipped up to a layer above the pot that I painted and we're going to switch back to the thick goopy paint for this and I am grabbing just this lighter green here and um, I'm going to add actually so that I have three layers in between the outline and the pot so that I can break up each leaf on its own layer. This is one of my favorite colors, this sort of um, squash caterpillar green. Squash caterpillar? Um, is it's, that, I, I wear it all the time. Is that a certain <laughs> kind of caterpillar or is it a squashed caterpillar? <laughs> squashed caterpillar. You know, the sort of like donkey poo kind of green. Oh, yeah, it's that, yeah. It's that green, but it's got a little bit of sort of dirty um brown in it i really like muted dimmed colors I yeah and that's what i gravitate towards of course i went ahead and drew the second leaf on the same layer so i just did a freehand selection here and i'm going to cut and paste that to split that up and now i'm moving to my next layer to do the last leaf I go back and forth on whether I work on tons of layers or not. Um, the, not even depending on the the brushes that I'm using or the project. Kind of more like with my mood. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 with you. Like sometimes you don't mind sort of it all being together. I agree. Yeah, and I I find sometimes that I learn more when I do that because you kind of have to work with what you have. And yeah, um, I admire anybody that can use dozens of organized layers but i'm, I'm people who person. name their layers i'm sorry people who name their la layers are they that are on another level i'm, I'm not there I'm not i try there. to name my layers for videos but that is yeah me absolutely too absolutely the only time that i'm that i'm like pretending like i do this all the time <laughs> yeah, look how organized i am <laughs> oh we have I'm sorry, I'm not going to pronounce this right. R Rai, Rai from Perth, Australia. Is that near or far for you, Abby? Very, very far. Opposite okay. side of the country, yeah. It takes okay. like uh, two weeks to drive there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So it would <laughs> be far, like driving really far. across the U.S. Pretty far. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. Wow. I always think of um, the Boney Bear song. He has a song called Perth. So that makes me think of. Oh. So I have added two clipping masks on top of each leaf layer. Mm -hmm. And on the lower of the two, I'm going to grab this light yellow here in the corner. And still using the thick goopy paintbrush, I am going to just outline these edges of the leaf. Well, with that nice... Um golden 
color. Yeah. So I'm trying to follow the um, actual edge of the leaf. So make note of where you've twisted it. Um, I'm going to my really twisty one. So here, I just have to remember which line indicates the actual edge. Is it, um, is it quite cold right now for you, Abby? It's freezing. We have the heater on. It was naught degrees this morning. That's, oh. uh, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Zero freezing yeah, point. Yeah, so that would, be, that would be 32 Fahrenheit. Very cold. Very, very, very cold. I didn't actually even know that it got that cold in Sydney. Um, it's sort of unusual, but it, it does. In winter, we get a bit of frost because we are, um, the place where our home is is quite far inland. We live closer to the Blue Mountains than to the sea. Okay. Um, you have such extremes. I think of yeah, we do like all of that flooding earlier in the year. Yeah, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. Um, and like heat up to forty eight degrees, just stupid temperatures. That's well over. That's got to be over one hundred twenty Fahrenheit, right? That's that's so hot. I think yeah it's very very hot that's unbearable my god yeah i think oh. um i think if you don't don't have an air con it's just like unlivable yeah um we took our honeymoon <laughs> to uh vegas which was not the original plan um but we rented a car and drove to death valley which is one of the hottest places in the u.s and it was Okay, Heidi confirms 120. Heidi's been so kind to <laughs> convert our, um, oh, I've lost a nail. <laughs> That's what I get for taping them on. Um, but he Heidi's been converting all of the temperatures in chat, which is helpful for me. Because I, I know it's like double and I think it's at 15, but maybe it's at 30. So I can't remember them all. But yeah, Death Valley. And it was a heat like I had never experienced because... Um, it was so dry and here in the Midwest, yeah. it's very, very humid, but there it was uh, just like, it's called Death Valley for a reason. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So I have now gone off, off palette. I took my original green that I drew the leaves with and just dragged my sliders over so that it was less saturated and lighter. And this is to draw the little stripey bits here. So on my second clipping mask, I'm going to reduce my brush size and then just do some like little wiggly bits. And I am actually going to do something inconvenient and reorder my clipping mask, not my group. Let's see. Because I want this to actually be below the yellow. So Got it. Go ahead and drag these around. So now, just do some squidgly little lines. Such Does the word. back, squidgly, <laughs> does the back of the leaf also have those lines? I believe so. I think so. I think so. Recently, Aldi had a special on potted plants, and mm -hmm. I went and got a whole lot. I love Aldi don't have any like super close like within walking distance to me and so I haven't been in years and they definitely didn't sell house plants when I was there no you have to wait for the Wednesday or the Saturday special and then you can go and get your high pressure cleaner your pantyhose your drain snake your whatever that's going on wow. that day <laughs> that's awesome. it's the best No, we've been honestly since the pandemic we just exclusively order groceries now um it's like 
you know, I should probably get in the habit of, of grocery shopping again someday because I do like to pick out my own produce. Um, but it's so convenient to just have them delivered. It's wonderful, isn't it? I, I can't believe the advances society has made. <laughs> the the I, pandemic actually brought out really good things, like people realized, oh, I can actually be at home and work and still be productive without um, driving so far. And I can order my groceries online and somebody can bring them to me and I don't have to traipse the aisles. It's been really good. Yeah. Um, hopefully it'll translate into like a, a less intense hustle work culture. Um, yeah. Because there have been like studies done to show how inefficient people are in the 40 hour work week because you do just waste a ton of time because you have to be there for that specific amount of time. Yeah. And you could realistically work a lot more quickly and, uh, Ho like hopefully it doesn't go the other way where people um are just like worked to the bone then yeah <laughs> and, and people are just like doing four four humans worth of jobs but um yeah, I, I think I, I there's think was... there's a move in the opposite direction like people are going well if I can't finish all of this I'm actually not going to stay later because it's the company's problem that they didn't assign enough people to do the job so it's not actually my problem yeah. to do the work of five people yeah um reading some i just like i see horror stories pop up every now and then of of people who work for um like just understaffed companies and the demands being put on them seems just so inhumane. So um, I think it's time that we all just rise up and say, you know what? If you want us to do that much work, you better pay us more or get more people or something. I think um, I, th I think the Great Resignation isn't that what they're calling it, where everybody's just yeah. walking out of things. It's brilliant. Yeah. Well, and. Um... Starbucks stores are unionizing, which is cool to see. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know what your um, labor movement is like in Australia, but it, it is very uh, diminished in the U.S. And so it's nice to see some of the biggest companies. Um, yeah. The workers forming unions. Not not to get like political. It shouldn't be. <laughs> we, want, we want the best for everybody. Yeah. Oh, in the U.S. Wednesdays is the day you go to Aldi for those things. I'll have to see. I really, I feel like I would enjoy Aldi an awful lot. <laughs> um, okay, so next on these stripes, what I'm going to do quick here is grab the smudge tool and the diluted paint smear brush. And I have my size reduced pretty small down to about 10%. I'm just going to run up and down the length of the leaves. This is where the magic happens. Although, I, you know, I kind of almost like the, the thick paint look too, but this, um, yeah, it has that like watery, like marbled look almost. Yeah, this is awesome. Then I'm going to make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay, so then I'm going to fill in some dirt on the pot. So on a layer below my pot that I've painted, I'll go back to my color palette and grab this darkest brown and the thick goopy paintbrush. Ooh, Sheila says she's part of the big quit, decided to retire early. Congratulations. That is Yay. so awesome. That is awesome. Life is for living. I agree. Not working. <laughs> I always used to say to Philip, because um, there was a stage like in 20, I don't know, I want to say 15, 
when he was there was a lot of talk uh, that people were like saying stuff about work-life balance and I always used to say to him work-life balance has got to be nonsense because if you spend half of your time being a different person to who you are in real life, that's not, that's no way to live. You have to be the same person and it's all part of the same life. So if it's not serving you and you have to separate the two, that's, yeah, I, I, I don't believe in work-life balance. I think it's nonsense. Yeah, um, it is, it is interesting how easy it is to just blur the lines and have everything slip into one another. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's impossibly easy. And then it kind of, you start to do it and then it just kind of becomes the expectation. Like, yes, exactly. Oh, you'll, you'll answer emails at 10, 10 PM and no. 6 AM and yeah, yeah. All of a sudden it's just the norm. Okay, so what oh, I've done here quick is I added one more clipping mask on top of each of my leaves because I want to add in some shading. And then I'm using the diluted paint smear and this is a light purple color. Um, usually when I uh, add shading and I have the blend mode set to multiply, I like to use something in this tone, whether it's blue or gray. But um, let me see, this is about 67% on the darkness slider. From reference, and then um, make sure which layer am I? Which which leaf is this? Okay, so I'm on the back leaf, so I'm going to add a little bit of shade from this middle one, and then on my middle leaf layer, setting the blend mode to multiply, and on this one, I'm just going to carefully add shade in the middle from the twist. And then a little bit below the twist here on the lower half. And then on my third leaf, once again, set this to multiply. And we'll add a little bit of shade on the base sides of the fold. And then a little in the center. I'm doing my shading with... Um goopy blender to Ooh. make it extra um scratchy and gritty it looks Look very nice good that is he's so cute i do like that so it looks like you've pulled the the shade yeah from the shadow point these are such good brushes thank you okay one more layer above my I guess at this point, if you want, you can pinch to merge all of your leaves together because I am going to. This is way too many, way too many layers. You can, <laughs> you can merge them in groups too. I actually think I'm going to have to because I can't reach all of that <laughs> to pinch it. Um, there we go. Much more simplified. Okay, so now on a layer above my pot, I'm also going to set this one to multiply and make this a clipping mask as well. And here, let's see, I kind of have my light source coming from up. Oh, I don't have my screen. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. So I kind of have my light source coming from like right here in front and then a little bit to the right. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of shadow underneath my glaze and I'll probably blend that out a bit so it's not quite a sharp shadow. And then I'm going to increase my brush size and add some shading outside. And then on the little foot of the pot. And then the back rim. Then with the smudge tool still set to the do well, let's smudge with the goopy blender. <laughs> it 
Leanne says 365 days of summer all year where I am, but you miss fall holidays. I think I would miss fall. I don't know that I would miss winter um, or spring. <laughs> spring just in, I, I don't know, it kind of goes from like really cold to really hot here. There's not a lot of transition on that side. But I think I would miss, I would miss fall as well. Right, I'm going to add a layer in between my multiply layer and my pot. And this one I'm going to set to add. And with the diluted paint smear brush, I'm gonna grab this lightest, it's like a peachy orange color-ish. I don't know, it's like a butter color. Hearing aid beige. Yes. <laughs> Um, I've been really into the add blood mode for lighting. Um, I usually decrease the opacity, but uh, it's been nice to build up um, color. If you like, if you blend out some of your lighting, it's you're able to hit both the super bright saturated or not saturated, but super bright um, light colors as well as have some tone and hue to your. Uh, lighting so do you put the ad um above the multiply or below i do it below um, okay yeah because because i usually go overboard with the, <laughs> with the lighting and so i need that multiply layer to mute it a bit um and again i'm going to reduce the opacity but i like to start with it on solid so even though i've chosen this um variegated beige color. It's showing up as white when I paint here. Okay, so let's try to do this rim. I think, I think it would just be like lighter here, right? Yeah. Lighter-ish? Okay. <laughs> All right, so then let's see, reduce my Capacity, increase my size and just over the center. And I am going to blend this as well, but it's gonna look a little funky here for a minute. All right, then with the goopy blender. Now I can reduce my opacity down. I think 50 looks good there. So what I, what I did here was I just added a little bit of light here on the edge to make it look like his features are embossed in the pot. I like that. Gives him a bit of zing. <laughs> okay, and then On a layer above the leaves. Let's see, I'm gonna pinch my leaves together and then I'm going to make this a clipping mask. I've already added the shade, but I do want to just add a little bit of highlight on top of these. So same thing with the add blend mode, same color and the diluted paint smear brush. blend with the goopy blender. I suppose I can hide my sketch layer at this point too. And then I'm 
reducing the opacity of this down to 50, which I might go a little further, 30% here. Okay, final two things, two more little tidbits here. I'm going to add two layers underneath everything. So right here, this is my soil. I'm gonna pinch to merge that with my um, pot layer. And actually, no, I just need to smudge in this shade here on that layer. Okay, so then on the layer below my pot now, just an empty layer, I'm going to use a black color. Um, and the wishy-washy watercolor brush which I don't have on my list here. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow underneath so that it looks like he's levitating. <laughs> <laughs> and then on my bottom layer, we're going to switch back to the thick goopy paint and paint in a shape in the background. Um, just need to decide what color. I think I will do <laughs> I just have used so many of these colors. I'll do I'll do the hearing aid color, which we'll see how that turns out. We can always adjust the color afterward. So I like to make the brush the largest size for this and use one continuous brush stroke, although you certainly don't have to use one if you want to layer in paint. a little bit. I'm using Goopy Blender to get a really nice sort of dry brush um, outline on the patch that he's standing on. <gasps> Ooh, you know I what I mean? So much, yes. I think that adding that little background patch really brings it all together and makes it all uh, like sort of cohesive. Yeah. You know, this um, makes me want to do your technique with the overlay layer over everything. Um, with Oh, do the shadow. Yeah. Yeah. The... yeah. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to merge. What do I do? Do I just merge everything together? <laughs> <laughs> Group it, make a duplicate, and then flatten it. I think you need to go back to your um, screen share. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Okay, what I did was I grouped all of my working layers up here. I have the sketch, I suppose I can delete that now. And then I made a duplicate of the group so that I could save all of my layers if I wanna go back in and change something. Um, but now I have a flattened version that I can make a clipping mask on. and. We'll leave it at normal right now. This is Abby's brilliant technique to create a like cohesive scene lighting. So we'll do this teal color. I'm gonna do the same. I'm Group, group, group. I am um, very much a digital hoarder. And so sometimes I go <laughs> back into canvases and I have just duplicates of groups of layers that just take up then so much space on, the, on my iPad. <laughs> but I can't let go. Yeah, I'm the same. I, I often, if I'm doing a piece that I, I want to change something but I'm not sure of, I duplicate the entire... Um, canvas and then I do whatever but I always keep the other one which is just jamming up my iPad yes. like crazy <laughs> and what really gets me is when I duplicate a canvas and keep the video replay uh, oh yeah <laughs> <of it. laughs> 
over and over <laughs> ad nauseum. Just so much, so much. I am a while back sold with a pack once um, a canvas and I didn't realize that I hadn't purged the video replay and the canvas was one that I'd been using for multiple things and so if you played back the video replay it was just me messing around just like doing brushstroke after brushstroke randomly deleting stuff it was like four hours long it was ridiculous and um yeah that was just me forgetting to delete it that's kind of amazing though <laughs> i got yeah, I got a message from this lady and she was like, did you intend to leave this thing in here? Because I tried to do a time lapse replay and all I got was your fiddling around in your canvas. Oh, funny. <laughs> I was just going to say, anybody that happened to watch it got that extra insight into your work. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I am in the hue, saturation and brightness panel trying to um tweak some of the colors because i think i did um low contrast too low of a contrast colors for this scene lighting i'm using the airbrush uh soft blend brush to tweak this So the method for this lighting is um, create a clipping mask above the layer that you're wanting to do the lighting on. And then do, hang on, let me make it not overlay. Uh, where's normal? And then pick a bluish color and a pinkish color and put the blue in the half that's dark and the pink in the half that is going to be the lighted part and then Gaussian blur it and then set it to overlay and it just pulls everything together as if it's all in one scene. It's genius. And are these two colors that you picked on your own? They don't look like ones from the palette. Oh, the pink is from your palette. I, I picked that pink and then I just moved it up so that it wasn't so, uh, it didn't have any tonal, um, any black in it. And then the blue is this blue. I always choose that blue. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That looks really good. I, I, bye Sheila. Two colors from the palette. Bye Sheila. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I picked two colors from the palette that didn't have high contrast. So it's nice to see those, those two in your history, um, to see the level of contrast needed for this. And it looks so good. He's so happy. I think that, um, oh, hang on. Not clipping mask. So I've turned off the, um, the flattened one that we made. So it's applied now to the original drawing. Okay. And then I'm going to mess around with the background patch color because it might be nice for it to be a bit darker. Yeah, that is the, um, the struggle that I have here with the um, my background color. I think I'll have to adjust it as well. Let me see if I can click. Because it's all just so yellow up here. And, and yeah. Well, I like him on the pink. Oh, and the blue. I can't decide. <laughs> Because there's so much yeah. yellow in here, yeah. it kind of gets washed out. Let's see where it's going. Not darker, maybe less so. There we are. Let's see how yours is going. Same. Done. Love it. I really Mine love isn't hovering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine's, mine's just alive and happened to jump. <laughs> So cool. Sorry, I interrupted you. You were saying? 
Well, I don't know what I would say. Sometimes <laughs> I just talk to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. All right. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, and I think we got the questions as we went. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. It's always so fun to chat with you guys and um, hear what you're up to and share this stuff with you. Thank you for hanging out and making stuff with us. And go immediately and check out this brush pack because it is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Again, just like the highest compliment coming from you. <laughs> Everything that we used is linked in the video description um, and the brushes are linked in the chat. And be sure to download at the very least the freebies from this session, yeah. the color palette and the free brush that we used. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Heidi. Bye, Alfredo. Bye, Leanne. Bye, Sheila. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Bye, guys. See you next time.